I'm going to guess that I don't need to tell you what Silent Hill is. You probably know what it is. If you're interested in horror video games at all, you've probably have played at least one of these games. It's probably the most influential horror video game series ever. Maybe Resident Evil is more influential, just in terms of how it plays, but uh, in terms of imagery and themes and all that, Silent Hill is extremely influential, and if you play pretty much any horror game today, it's influenced in some way from the Silent Hill series, some more overt than others. Um, But the point is that you probably know what this is. Even if you haven't played a Silent Hill game, you probably have seen one, You probably have an idea of what the imagery is like, that it's about going into a world full of blood and darkness and rusted metal. There are a lot of fences. Maybe a tall man wearing a metal helmet shaped like a pyramid, though he's only in uh, in two of the games, I believe. And a movie. Two movies. There was a sequel. Uh, But that's not what we're talking about. Right now, what we're talking about is the game series, uh, specifically the first game, Silent Hill 1, which was my favorite game in the series. And what I want to do here as we play through this game is I want to think about the period of time when this came out, when there was no Silent Hill franchise. There was no series. This wasn't well known. It was just one standalone game that came out in 1999. When it came out, it was a very unique thing. It didn't look like it was going to be unique at first because you look at it and you say, oh, Konami's making their own Resident Evil because Resident Evil had come out by that time. And was successful. Actually, this was 99, so Resident Evil 1 and 2 would have come out by then. So, Resident Evil, selling well. It's well known. It's the the premier horror series of the time. So, Silent Hill comes out, plays a lot like Resident Evil. So, Konami's making themselves one of those games. But then when you played Silent Hill, it turned out to be a lot more than just one of those games. It was something very unique, had a lot of different ideas that... uh I I had not seen in a video game before, so this was one of the times in my life when a video game was genuinely surprising, and I really didn't know what was going to happen in it. You can't really say that about the series now, because it's been around, the series has been around for a long time. You know what the series' tricks are, you know? You know that there's going to be another world. You know there's going to be darkness. You know there's going to be monsters that symbolize things, right? Well, when the first game came out, you didn't know anything about it. So that was my favorite period of time of the Silent Hill series, back when only the first game existed and no one knew anything about the thing. You couldn't look up any information about it online. You couldn't look up the backstory. There were no FAQs to tell you the story or what was happening. There was no expanded lore. There were just people online arguing about what the story was about. So, I want to look at the game from that perspective. And as we go into this, before we start, I want to take a look at the manual. Because since... There was no source of information about what the story was, and since the story is told in a very obtuse manner, the only information that the player would have had going into the game would have been the manual. So let's take a look at what little backstory there is in this manual. We can take a look at the prologue pages, get an idea of what it had to say. It said... The resort town of Silent Hill slips into quiet desolation. Now that the peak of development and growth has passed by, the memories of a tragic fire seven years ago still haunt the townsfolk, and with the tourist season long past, there is hardly a shadow stirring. Harry Mason prefers to take late vacations with his daughter Cheryl. This year, they've made plans to visit Silent Hill. Due to car trouble, they reach the outskirts of the town late at night. Cheryl is sleeping in the back seat as a motorcycle cop roars past his truck. Moments later, Harry spots the motorcycle dumped on the shoulder. There's no one to be seen. It paints an ominous picture. Suddenly, a shadow appears in front of the car. Harry turns the wheel in panic. The car slides off the edge of the road and into a gully. Harry eventually regains consciousness. Cheryl is nowhere to be seen. It is unusually cold, 
Snow is falling out of season. Where has Cheryl disappeared to? Harry walks toward a town he sees in the distance. Game objective, find Harry's missing daughter, Cheryl. Very to the point, that is the game objective. That's what we're doing throughout this entire game all the way to the very end. We are trying to find Cheryl. So this is the only uh, backstory that we have going into this. It mentions that Silent Hill, not doing so well econo economically. It's been stagnating. Development has passed by. They make money from tourism, but uh, not much growth happening. It's kind of a town with no future, maybe, is the idea. But uh, Harry and Cheryl go in there on vacation. They're, let's see. Let's take a look at the, the bios for the characters. Here we go. Character page. Harry Mason, age 32. But, oh my god, I'm older than Harry Mason. How did that happen? Jesus. Harry Mason, age who knows, could be anything. He's a dad. He's a writer and a protagonist. Dual career, dual occupation. He's both writer and protagonist. It says... Losing his wife to disease has left a shadow over his soul. His daughter is the only bright spot left in his life. He goes to Silent Hill to go on vacation with his daughter, to be mired in bizarre events. That was the beginning of this tale, or was it predetermined somehow? That's a truth that Harry has yet to discover. Cheryl Mason, age seven, Harry's daughter. She lost her mother at a young age and lives with her father, a gentle normal child. She goes on vacation with her father to Silent Hill. However, an unimaginable event is waiting to unfold. Let's take a look at the other bios. We have Sybil Bennett, age 22. She's a police officer. She is an officer that patrols near Silent Hill. A sudden call causes her to investigate Silent Hill. She is faithful to her duties and investigates Silent Hill on her own. Yeah, I don't think we ever find out what that call was about. She, answer, she drives to Silent Hill because she got a call, but I don't think that ever actually comes up in the game itself. And the final bio is this white silhouette of Alessa. Harry runs across this mysterious girl several times. Who or what is she? So those are, that's the character information that we get. Uh, Harry, being a writer, I don't think ever actually comes up in the game. Like, Harry's actual kind of his backstory, really doesn't matter that much. The only thing we know is that he's a writer. He used to have a wife. Wife is dead. That's all we really know. Uh, I think there was one other page in this manual I wanted to look at, yeah, which was the hints, specifically the bottom hint, which is where it gives a hint about gun. It says, since the character is a normal person with no special training in shooting a gun, his skill with it is marginal. Even in daylight or with the light on, his accuracy with the weapon is questionable and is certainly dependent on the distance. Try to let the enemies close in a bit to get off a sure hit. That was like a kind of a mind-blowing thing at the time of, hey, you're playing as a normal person. He doesn't know how to use a gun. If an enemy is far away, you're going to miss. So try to stand still and get a close-up shot. And you know what's... You know, most of the time you play a video game, you play like a soldier or some commando or SWAT team member, someone who's able to fight and, you know, has training with weapons. And certainly that's the case in Resident Evil. Even Claire, who technically in Resident Evil 2 is not really like a cop or anything, she uses weapons real okay. She uses them fine. But in uh, Silent Hill, Harry's just a normal guy. Doesn't know how to use a gun. He's not good with it. I, you know, this really is not a selling point for a game now to say, hey, your player is clumsy and doesn't know how to fight. But at the time, it was kind of an interesting thing. Well, I think that's all I wanted to take a look at at the manual right now. Let's start the game. And um, like I said, we're going to be playing through. We're going to be going for all endings. Uh, and there are five. The first one we're going to be going for is the bad ending, which would probably probably be the first one you get for a first time player. There sure is. Ah. 
Ah, uh, the days when Konami was interested in making video games. Well, that's basically how it went in the manual. We, uh, ran into a figure in the street. After a motorcycle cop passed us by on the road, but that cop was nowhere to be seen. What happens after that is what we're going to find out. Okay, options. Uh... As far as options goes, the only thing that I think I really changed was brightness level, which I changed to zero. Usually, I'll make the game a little bit brighter than normal when recording, just to make sure everyone is able to see it. In this game, this is dropping to zero. Make this game as dark as possible. We could turn it up, but no. Vertical lines? Those vertical lines are being invisible. That's right. Nothing. This game uh, has a lot of scenes in darkness, and it does it very well. Even though a lot of the game is dark, I never feel that there's a. I never feel that I have any trouble actually being able to see where to go. Uh, it does pitch blackness very well. Kind of the opposite of another game we've played, The Ring: Terror's Realm. Which also does pitch blackness, but does it kind of badly. Um, if you haven't watched the playthrough of the Rings Terror's Realm, well, that is a that is an attempt at basically trying to make this game, but where everything possible can possibly go wrong with it does go wrong. It's actually kind of amazing. So this is like the best case scenario, uh, Silent Hill, and the Ring is the worst case scenario basically, when it comes to this kind of game. Uh, oh, and if you're wondering about the technical details of the recording, I'm playing this on a PS3. You can see that here. Uh, the reason I'm playing it on a PS3 instead of a PS1 is because if you've tried recording a PS1 game, specifically this one, you might know that uh, it changes resolutions while you're playing the game. The gameplay itself takes place in 240p, the inventory and map screens are in 480i, and the resolution switches whenever you go between those screens, and you might know that capture equipment really doesn't like it when a game does that, so the easiest way to record this game is to do it on a PS3, which is what we're doing, upscaling it to 1080p. If you're interested in the tech details, that is. We're going to start a game. Uh, we're just going to go with normal. That should be fine.
Well, Cheryl's gone. We have to find her. But it seems like probably the best thing we could do is just go back to the car. I mean, it's, what, it's a big town. What, are we going to just look all over the town to try to find one child? That seems unlikely. That look, kind of looks like barbed wire, so I guess we probably shouldn't go down there. Let's just head back to the car. She's probably waiting there for us. See, here it is. We can see how we were on a ledge, like driving on a, on a hillside. We fell down the hill, drove through this barrier, and we can see how we hit right here. That would have been a pretty hard hit. That was a hard crash. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be moving again. It's also kind of surprising that no one went through the windshield, so it's a good thing that everyone was wearing their belts. We could try to leave the town, only to find that um, the street is blocked. Can't get out of town through here. Harry seems not very uh, surprised about there being a landslide blocking the street. I mean, maybe it's because he has his mind on, on finding his daughter. But uh, you'd think he'd think this is a little bit strange. But it's not like he could even give any thought to leaving the town now. He can't leave the town until he finds Cheryl. So technically it doesn't matter that the way out of town is blocked. There's a convenience store up here. It's, um, eight. I guess just eight, sure. Let's see what's inside. Except we can't do that, because we hear footsteps. You're supposed to just walk forward and hear the footsteps, but I guess if I mess around for too long, the game is just going to make me do this. It's going to make me walk into position. Well, it's good to see that Cheryl's all right. She probably shouldn't be walking around in the road like that, but it doesn't seem like there's any traffic. Now that we found her, we probably should try to find a way out of town. But well, she seems okay. But I guess we can't go that way. Crabs. Maybe we should get Cheryl over here and have some crab dinner. Though I don't know if this place is open. Doesn't seem like it. There are a lot of buildings, but we can't really walk into any of them. On occasion, we can. Now, the game's just, again, the game's tired of me messing around, so it's going to make me go over here. But, but what about the fish and fries? Maybe Cheryl wants some fish and fries. There's some, it seems like some kind of some nice restaurants in this place. It is a tourist town, so they gotta have some good food. Well, okay, let's follow Cheryl down the alley. I'm glad she waited for us. And we heard her go through there. Beware of dog. Well, hopefully there's no dog here. Oh, there's the dog, right. Don't, don't walk in the dog. No, we walked in it. What is it? I guess Cheryl encountered the dog and we see what happened. No, of course our little Cheryl wouldn't do that. At this point, it's uh, a thing to note that unlike Resident Evil at the time, the uh, backgrounds are not pre-rendered, so they can do some camera tricks with the backgrounds. Like that one. That's always a good one. That little, that little swivel of the camera right there so you run into the wall. That was also, that was a big thing about this game, that it was not pre-rendered. Everything was real-time. Very impressive on the PS1, even if maybe it doesn't... You're not going to say it has impressive graphics now. By the PS1 standards, this was actually pretty incredible. And it's, you know, the sun went out. 
That's no big deal, really. You know, cloudy clouds will gather in the sky, starts raining. No big deal. Eh, you know, we don't need to worry about that. I'm sure I'm sure Cheryl just ran past this. Someone should come back here to clean up this alley, though. Just like there's like bodies and blood everywhere. And ominous music. And bloody fences. What is this? What's going on here? It's a good question. What? What's this doing here? This shouldn't be here. Neither should the, be these children with knives. Well, they look like small people. Small gray people. They might be kids? But we should probably run away because we have no weapons. Except this fence. It wasn't here before, but it's blocking us now. Was I dreaming? How do you feel? Oh, like I've been run over by a truck. But I'm all right, I guess. Glad to hear it. You from around here? Why don't you tell me what happened? Wait a second, I'm just a tourist. I came here for a vacation. I just got here. I don't know what happened. I'd like to find out myself. Uh huh. Have you seen a little girl? Just turned seven last month, short, black hair. My daughter. Sorry. The only person I've seen in this town is you. Where is everybody? I'd tell you if I knew, believe me. But from what I can tell, something bizarre is going on. That's all I know. Hmm. What's your name? Harry. Harry Mason. Sybil Bennett. I'm a police officer from Brams, the next town over. The phones are all dead, and the radio too. I'm going back to call in some reinforcements. Hmm. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? My daughter. I've got to find her. No way. It's dangerous out there. In that case, I need to find her now. Cheryl's my little girl. I can't just leave her out there by herself. Have you got a gun? Um, no. Take this, and hope you don't have to use it. Now listen to me. Before you pull the trigger, know who you're shooting. And don't do it unless you have to. 
And don't go blasting me by mistake. Got it? Yeah, thanks. You'd do best to stay nearby. I'll be back with help as quick as I can. She won't come back. We could stay in the restaurant for as long as we want, but she'll never come back. I, I kind of think it's probably against police procedure to just give someone a gun, regardless of the situation. She probably should have insisted that Harry come with her, since Harry was, was insistent on running out into the town to try to find his daughter. Here's a health drink. It's a DX brand health drink. DX, very concerned about your health. That's right. All those times they told you to suck it, they were talking about this health drink. Suck it down for your health. You didn't know. Now you do. We're going to take the flashlight, and we're going to take the map of the residential area. Well, that thing in the background probably was no concern. We don't need to worry about that. We do need to worry about this pinball machine. It's nothing unusual. Unfortunately, we cannot play pinball. And we don't have time to study, damn it. And also, fortunately, whoever owns this diner just kind of left a knife lying around. Probably shouldn't do that, but we're going to take it. I never actually use the kitchen knife, though. We never, we never really need to. You know, that, um, that first world transition in the alley, thinking about, again, when this game was new, that was, like, a really incredible thing, because, again, I, that, I'd never seen a video game do that before, and it, the transition is really good, it's really gradual, going into the alley, seeing some blood, Sky starts to darken, so we use our lighter to light our way. Uh, the lighter becomes the only source of light. The walls start to turn into fences. There's more blood. Uh, the fences start to become bloody. Then there starts to become barbed wire everywhere. Uh, music picks up with uh, in the industrial sounds, and then we run into the corpse strung up on the fence with the barbed wire. And then the whole thing is just darkness and barbed wire. Uh, it's a really good transition, and you start to think about how this alley seems too long. Why is it so long? And then when you run back and there's a fence there that wasn't there before. Again, you play these games now, you know that you know what they're gonna do, you know their tricks, so it's not really a big deal, but at the time when I had never seen a video game do something like that before. And also, I had never watched Jacob's Ladder. I had never seen that movie. So, there's also that. It was kind of an incredible thing. Uh, and really does set the tone as to what it is that we're going to have to deal with. It's not just fighting monsters that are easily explained, but uh, stuff's going to happen which is not going to make a whole lot of sense, uh, is what that tone sets. For right now, I think we're going to just walk over here and save our game. Yes, someday someone might find Harry's notes, like in a sequel someday, but we won't talk about that right now. Let's uh, save our game. And next time in Silent Hill, we are going to explore the outside. We're going to leave the safety of the restaurant because uh, Sybil's not coming back. It would be cool if we stuck around long enough if she did, but she is not going to. So we're going to leave this restaurant. We're going to try to find Cheryl, which again is our only objective in this entire game. We have to find her. And uh, we'll start on that next time on Let's Play Silent Hill.